I was just rediscovering um, for the first time in years a great piece by Haydn, uh, the Nelson Mass, and in particular, Et Incarnatus Est. Recurrences when you have those accents on crucial sentences like crucifixus, passus, passus. And you have the strong consonants, even the S's are very, very present, especially in crucifixus, passus. The, even the last S's are extremely important because they whistle in terms of components. They have, they have this potential to carry emotions and this is something we'll see of, often in Arabic singing uh, is that the consonants really have this pregnant bearing of power because the consonants are not empty they are dragged on as it with a mute e and they carry on a lot of choking a lot of whistling a lot of power um, and in italian opera you have this or in the um overall bel canto tradition you have a lot of power within the double r's or the double t's and the double um the, the s's uh, the consonants have a lot of existence. I think this is a good example of that um, technique. I'm reminded how much of a great choral construction this is. From the beginning, there is a lot of uh, call to identification as a listener to be able to involve oneself emotionally even the first word et is full of sobbing and uh, motherly compassion in the intro the strings have a major role and they pour on pity and they pour on crying and sobbing a lot of uh, choking and breathing a lot of long freezes but with some kind of struggle uh, they're not just easy legati phrases they are phrases with hesitations they are phrases with failing the fallible natures just like humans and just like we want to understand christ to be uh, as a human being which was the essence of his coming to earth as a man and being incarnate these are different characters singing this and those are different life experiences so you have a different take on the same existential path the same philosophical statement and it's almost a different world it's tonalities and accents the, the, the male parts in the chorus especially basses uh, bringing on the rest of the choir with Supontio having the choir joining in and lacing itself as a family is a magical understanding context subconsciously, emotionally, this beauty of micro society which you know, communicates between each other. And it is something of a wonder when you have something like that in a chorus because Obviously, in real life, you don't have bases communicating and introducing the females and the tenors in that manner and understanding, anticipating the, the other person's needs and then building on that need and taking part in their life in that manner. Not really. This is the magic of composition when it's done greatly and how it can act on the mind and I believe this can be used in therapy. The exclamation by the sopranos crucifixus starting with a G, a top G, you have 
a lot of eloquence, a lot of uh, elocution skill, a lot of these accents on the R's and the C's. The sopranos don't just blurt out some uh, exclamation about a, f a fact or about um, pain. But even then, the R's and the eloquence, the, 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 the rounding of the consonants are very powerful and giving a lot of uh, presence and a lot of lucidity. This is not some uh, character who's losing it out of distress. This is somebody who is uh, pronouncing a fate, somebody's fate, but el eloquently discussing the subject and putting details into it. The overall composition reminds me so much of a family, of a group of people with arguments, with fights around dinner table, who have different voices and different characters, different views on the world, who want to have a word in first, but in the end agree somehow, collate somehow around one subject. And they don't do it out of harmony, out of Christian love, they do it because there is some consensus, uh, a human consensus about uh, the subject of Christ. And this is the painting we have here by Haydn, of all these people, base, fathers, mothers, sisters, young sopranos, and, and also the cousins, all, the, all the, the choir just joins in, and perhaps also the servants, to disagree and to agree, to agree to disagree around one subject, and voicing the opinions and voicing the experiences around one subject, which basically unites them and finally, eventually, puts them together. And this is the essence of the Christian faith, and I believe that great composers can do that, paint characters, and paint their reactions, and paint their harmony or disharmony about something or another. And it's a magnificent piece of choral uh, structure because of that, because of that realistic painting and this statement about human nature and human societies.